Okay, welcome back, ENG 460 uh, number 9. Last time we showed you how to use the ASCII Z directive in the data segment to declare an ASCII string. Well, now we're going to show you how to print that string out to the console. Now you remember under window you had a bunch of things, integer, registers, floating point, text, segment, data segment, console. Well, there's your data segment, uh, your floating point registers, your integer registers, and your text. But where's the console? Well, sometimes you've got to look for that console, but here it is right here. It's a separate window. Okay, I'm going to put it down here in the lower right. And what we're going to do is we're going to print stuff out, because as we start writing programs, it's always nice to be able to print things out and kind of do a sanity check. All right, so it's a little special feature, and there's a special function we use. So we're going to use our ASCII Z directive to declare character strings, and then we're going to do some stuff to print them out to the console. All right, so let me bring over the program that we're going to use and here's the program all right let's take a look at this guy what's in the program well we got our usual comments right i mean by this time that's pretty much uh, straightforward a pound sign uh, gives you a comment and this is uh introduces something called sys call all right then uh, what else do you have well you got a data section all right there's your data section okay and then what else do you have in a program well you got your text section all right there is your text section right there okay now, we're actually missing something here. Let's put that in there. Let's put that global directive, and we'll call it my main. And the reason I call it my main is because there's always a, already a main there that appears in the exception handler, and, and you'll get a conflict. Okay. So let's look at this. Now, at this point, um, based if you watched the previous video, the data section should be pretty straightforward, right? I'm declaring a label called name, and I'm giving it my name, Dr. Walsh. And then, for those of you that are familiar with C and C++, what's the backslash in? Well, that's just a carriage return, right? New line. So, this string consists of the ASCII representation of Dr. Walsh and then two new lines. Okay? And then, I've got a label called course. Well, that's just the name of the course with a carriage return. And then, I've got lab, and that's the name of the lab. But notice, there's no carriage return here. Okay? And then I actually have this thing called CR, which is a carriage return. That's all it is. It's just a carriage return. There's no text. So that's just 8 bits, 1 byte, 1 ASCII character. And then I've got the date, month, day, year, separated by a forward slash. Then I've got two carriage returns here. And then I've got NT, which is normal termination. Now I want you to print out normal termination at the end of all your programs so that you know that you actually made it to the bottom of the program. Any kind of a little debugging technique. So we've created all these strings. Now because we've used ASCII with the Z, they're going to be null terminated. All right, let's save this guy and let's uh, reinitialize and load file. And this guy is what, the syscall one? And go look at our data section. And there you go. Our data starts at 1001 quad zero. And then again, you know, the 44 we know is a capital D. Dr. Walsh, E and G, here's all my um, stuff over here is all your... Um, uh, text okay now let's uh, go back to our text section and you know here's the code we've loaded in right, this is NQT spam I can bring up the the text editor and look at it let's talk about it in the editor here so at this point we come down to our text section and what do we do well we use the load immediate command. Now, do you remember that? I think we talked about that a few videos back. What does that do? That actually puts the value of 4 in the V0 register. Now, we haven't really talked about the V0 register. All right, let's go see if we can find the V0 register. Where is that guy? Let's go back to QT spim and go to integer registers. And I tell you, there's 32 registers here. And, oh, there's the V0 register. All right, that's the register 2. So there's your V0 register, and that's what we wanted, right? Okay. So yeah, so it turns out you're going to put um, an integer into V0, and depending on what you want to do, that integer will uh, change. If you want to read or write an int or a float, it'll change to a different value. But if you want to print a string, it's always going to be 4. So you've got to put 4 into V0. Then what you have to do is you've got to tell it, well, what string do I want to print? I want to print this first string. That first string has a label of name. So I put name down here and I load that into A0. But I don't do a load immediate because this guy is an address. You know, that name is a symbolic reference to the address of Dr. Walsh, which begins at 1001 quad zero. So what I have to do is use the LA command. Now the LA command is load 
address. Okay, so I'm loading the address of name into A0. So the bottom line is you set up V0 with a integer that tells you what you want to do and a for represent presents print string. Then you come along and put the address of the string into A0, address being the label you used in the data section, and then you call syscall, and that will actually print it out. And then you notice what I've done, it's the exact same thing on every single thing here. When I want to print out course, what do I do? Well, I load immediate, I put 4 into V0, because it's possible it could have changed. And then I put the address of course into A0, and I call syscall again. When I want to print out lab, what do I do? Well, I make sure that V0's got 4 in it. I put the address, label, lab into A0, and I call syscall again. Now notice when I print out lab, there's no carriage return. So this code right here is actually going to print out a carriage return. I make sure that V0's got 4 in it. I take CR, I put the address into A0, and I call syscall. Syscall is kind of a special function. Same thing on date. I make sure V0's got 4 in it. I, make, um, I move uh, date load the address into A0 and call syscall. Now as you write programs throughout this code, I want, or throughout this course, I want everybody to uh, have a NT or a normal termination. And I want you to print that out at the end of your program to verify that you didn't get into an infinite loop and you actually termin executed your, or exited out of your program. So down here, you make sure V0's got four, and then you load the address, NT, into A0. NT is the label associated with the message normal termination. And then uh, you call syscall and it prints out. So now you kind of see what this thing down here was doing. Um, when we put 4 into V0 and call syscall, it prints out a string. But when we put a 10 into V0 and call syscall, it terminates the program. So it's kind of like you put particular integers into V0 and call syscall. And depending on what you put into V0, different things happen. All right, so let's go ahead and run this guy. Let me save that. Let me minimize that. Reinitialize. Load file. Let's see. I want this is call. Yeah, make sure I had the right one in there. And uh, let's just run it full bore. What I'll do is I'll just boom, run it full bore. And there you go. It printed out my name, two carriage returns, 460, lab zero, month, day, year, and normal termination. So all we did was just print stuff out to the console. Okay. Now what we can do is file, reinitialize, load the file again. Okay. Because I reinitialize, my console is uh, empty. Now what I can do, if I can keep both of these on the screen, I wonder if I can uh, keep these on the screen, and then now I keep losing my console. What if I hit F10? Will it be smart enough to exit? Cute. Now i got to have the focus up there. Okay. Well, let's see. Um, what I can do is shrink this guy down. And let's put my console right here. Okay, and now at this point, I think I can hit F10 and step through the program. Okay, so at this point, you've loaded um, 4 into V0. Now you're loading the address into A0. And now the minute I step over, okay, I'm, I'm using F10, right, to um, single step. The minute I hit F10, I should get something in my console window. And there I did. I just printed out Dr. Walsh. Now if I keep hitting F10, I'm going to make sure V0 has 4 in it. It probably does. I'm sure it's not changing. It sometimes may change. There are circumstances, but it's probably not changing. And then now I am going to load the address, of course, into A0. And then I will call syscall. And there you go. We just printed out ENG 460. I load V0 with uh, load immediate, V0 with 4. I load the address into A0 of lab. I call syscall. Boom, lab 0. Make sure V0 has uh, 4 in it. Load the address, call syscall. I did a carriage return. Didn't see anything, but it did move the cursor down. I load uh, immediate, V04. I load the address of date into um, the A0 register. And then I call syscall, and there's my date. I do my normal termination, call syscall, and there's my normal termination. Now I load 10 into V0. Let's go make, see what is in V0. V0 had better be 4. Yeah, it never changed, because we're just constantly loading it in there. So you could basically eliminate that and, uh, and, and not have to load it every time. But it's a good practice to load it every time at this point of the game. And now when I load it with v V0 with 10, that says terminate the program. And then if I hit F10 again, I, I'm stuck there. Now if I hit F10 again, it'll go back to the beginning. So the whole point on this code, on this example here, was to illustrate that um, V0 is kind of a control register. When you load it with 4 and you call syscall, it's going to print out whatever is A0 is pointing to. 
when you load V0 with 10 and call syscall, it's going to terminate the program. And now you can also use this to read and write integers to the console and also to read and write floating point to the console. You just load V0 with something different. All right. Okay. So now you know how to print to the console. That's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching.